All right, last but not least, the key control system. This is incredible. With a couple of clicks of the button, you can stay inside of any scale you want. You can press the wrong keys, it's no problem. VIP is gonna move you into the right scale, no questions asked. It also has a feature to harmonize, so you just press that one C and you're gonna get a full chord, a minor chord, anything you want, tons of variations inside of there, all customizable, and then the progressions. So VIP has a number of built-in progressions for dance music, ballad, gospel, and things like that. You're gonna get a full chord, on every note and it makes a progression that works and sounds great inside of various different genres. We're gonna go in depth into all of them and we're also gonna check out the brand new pad chord progression system which is available for the Akai Advanced keyboard users. I'm really pumped about this feature. I'm excited to share it with you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's check out how VIP helps people with music theory. Now we can look at this in two different ways. One is someone like me with little to no music theory background. VIP helps me create chord progressions, it helps me stay in key, and it gives me helpful hints along the way. And it, we can also look at it from the perspective of someone who knows music theory and has been playing an instrument for a long time, but wants to make sure they're never making a mistake. VIP also does that with the same controls. So it's not necessarily just a tool for people like me without any music theory, especially if you're doing live performances and you wanna stay in key. To check out the music theory features, we're gonna click this keyboard. And inside of VAP, it's called the key control because it's gonna actually control the keys of the MIDI keyboard. We got key control and we have to go ahead and click it on. And the first option is the scales option. We actually have three options. We have scales, harmonize, and progression. We're gonna check all three of those out right now. The scales version is gonna make sure you never go outside of the scale you've chosen. Here we have the key of C and major. Now the key of C major uses only the white keys. So if you click a black key, you're actually outside of the key. And I think a good demonstration is to go ahead and click the keyboard view here so we can see the keyboard. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and press the C sharp. And you'll notice that the D actually lit up and that's because I'm in the key of C major and as I said, none of the black keys correspond to any notes inside of that scale. So what VIP is doing is moving that wrong note to its closest correct note. And that sometimes could mean up a half step or down a half step. So all of those notes right there, I'm actually pressing the black keys, but VIP is moving them all to the white keys because of that scale. So let's check out the key. We have got all of the normal keys here. We've got C through B. Next, we can choose the scale for that key. And there are a ton, as you can see here, the major modes, we've got harmonic minor modes, melodic minor modes, symmetrical scales, pentatonics, bebops, hexatonics and some others. And if you go ahead and change it, you'll see that the keyboard here is actually updated to show us what we should and shouldn't press. But again, because we're using this as a tool to not go outside of the scale, we don't really need to worry about it, but it's always a good idea to be trying to learn your scales along the way. Now pad mode are for keyboards with pad systems on them or just pads, like uh, let's say the Ableton Push, for example. You wanna activate that, then you wanna choose the start note. So you can just double click and type in whatever you want. And you gotta make sure to hit enter because if you don't hit enter and click out of the box, it's actually gonna revert to wherever it was before, whatever value it was. So let's check out the next mode, which is harmonize. And let's go back to C major, just so we can see better down here on the keyboard what's happening. Right now, inside of the harmonize mode, I've got the notes one, three, and five pressed. So that's the major chord. So if I press just the C key here on my keyboard, and it's really great because again, we have all of the choices here for the keys and all the choices for the scales and we can choose what sort of chord we're gonna be forming. There are a few popular choices to choose from, sort of presets. And we can actually mix them up by clicking each any one of them. So here we can just say, maybe we want the 12th. Obviously that's a little strange to have it go one, 12, five, seven, but it's the same thing. If we wanna go one, three, five, 12 or something. Mm -hmm. 
and again, we can have the pad mode available to us right here. And the third mode, which is progression, are where things really get cooking for people like me who don't have a background in music theory. Go ahead and click progression. Now there are a number of chord progressions to choose from. If I click here, we've got ballad, dance, gospel, jazz, and pop. Let's just go ahead and choose dance for now. Come down to the second menu and inside of the factory, we have 20 different dance style chord progressions. So let's just go ahead and choose one. And what we need to do now is choose a starting note. And the reason why we need to do that is because there's only so many chords inside of the chord progression, so not all of the keys on the keyboard are gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is actually just come in and choose C2, and again, hit enter. So let's go ahead and press C2 and see what happens. C sharp. D. D sharp. E. F. F sharp. And then G. So we've got a really nice chord progression there. If I go ahead and press the C1 now, that's actually just one note because we've, again, we've set the start note at C2, so anything under that isn't gonna be triggering a chord, and there's only so many chords inside of the progression. So if we come over here, we can actually see that the original key is C sharp minor. If we wanted to change that, we could and still use those same keys, but now those keys are actually gonna be triggering chords inside of the key of D. And if we wanted to transpose all of those chords up or down, we just need to use the octave control here. And again, I'm just pressing the C2 there. I'm not doing any work on the keyboard that you can't see. I'm just using these controls to completely manipulate what's going on inside. Things can get even better using the articulation controls. So I'm gonna go ahead and click down. We've got chord one, C sharp, chord two, C sharp minor, chord three, F sharp minor, and we can really see the chords that are laid out inside of this progression. And we can actually do something like flam, which is gonna go ahead and play the notes in a certain order. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm on chord one, and I'm gonna pull over the flam time. I'm gonna go ahead and press that C2, and let's see what happens. So if you were paying attention to the keyboard, you'll notice that the keys are actually getting played in a sequence. And we can actually choose how those are played. So as played, or if we wanna go up, down, or random. And we can choose how random they are. Velocity random and velocity scaling. So we got quite a few options. Now, if we wanted to edit all of the chords at the same time, so they all had the flam, for example, we just hit edit all and then move that parameter. And now if I go into chord six, you'll see that that flam parameter, flam time has been moved as well. I'm gonna actually go ahead and keep it on and just move it all back, come back into that first one and do something like this. But now we can really start getting into some creative ideas using these types of articulation controls. So you can see that once we dial in our multi-instruments or our patches and we get all of our effects lined up, jumping into the key control section is really gonna help us open the doors in terms of creativity and to make sure we're not making any mistakes in our live performance settings. There's one other thing I wanna touch on and that is the pad layout. If you have a dedicated controller from Akai or any of the other manufacturers that are now communicating with VIP or if you're mapping your own pads, you'll see over here in the pad layout that we have eight pads down here. And we can actually have a chord progression laid out on these eight pads. So if I come in and again choose dance and come over to factory and choose another chord progression, you'll see that the pads down here have been updated into different chords. <laughs> Not only that, but there are a number of banks for most of them.
And if you've got one of those Akai keyboards, you can now just start playing chord progressions with those eight pads instead of using keys. And again, we've still got all of our controls here. We've got the key control, we've got the octave control and the articulation control, everything we had before, but now we can be focusing on what's happening with just those pads. But anyway, that's how VIP helps people with music theory.